Thank you for thinking of me and having me here. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about fetal rights, which is part of a broader, or linked to a broader concept of fetal personhood, and I'm going in to some extent rely on your expertise to parse out the ethical implications of this. So I'm going to start with the kind of the legal and um, civil ramifications at the moment. Um, I'm going to start with one story, true story. I'm more or less quoting from the New York Times. Uh, 2013, Alicia Beltran, she lived in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and she was pregnant, and she did the right thing and went for a prenatal exam. And in that prenatal exam, she did the right thing and honestly answered the questions about previous drug use. Her answer was that yes, she had been addicted to pills in the past, but that she had stopped more than a year ago, or about a year ago and um, later urine testing verified that in fact there were, there were no drugs in her system. Um, despite her statements, her doctor and a social worker accused her of endangering her unborn child after she refused their order that she start an anti-addiction program for the, or an anti-addiction, yeah, drug and program for the addiction that she didn't actually have. Um, she was taken in shackles before a family court commissioner and at that point she learned that her fetus had a lawyer, but that there was no way for her to have a lawyer. She was committed to a drug treatment center under a law that allows child welfare authorities to forcibly confine a pregnant woman who uses illegal drugs or alcohol to a se se uh, severe degree and who refuses to accept treatment. She was essentially incarcerated in this treatment center for 78 days before the case was dropped. Um, and it was dropped because unusually there was a public outcry that, um, that emerged around this case. Um, you might, if you haven't heard about this case or these cases, this might sound unusual, but in fact, um, between 2005 and 2013, there have been more than 300 cases identified and documented in which um, pregnant, uh, pregnant or childbearing women have been arrested, detained, or forced to endure um, medical interventions against their will. Um, there's also a lot of other cases that aren't necessarily within the criminal justice system or the uh, medical system, but are in the child welfare system and other things like that. Um, so all of this is based on the, a concept of fetal rights, which essentially says that um, and again, linked to fetal personhood, that the fetus is fully a person deserving of the same rights as any other person, and that therefore the fetus's rights are of at least equal value to the childbearing or pregnant woman's rights. This is rather obviously um, assuming that there's a potential conflict between the rights and interests of the fetus and the woman, right? Um, and not surprisingly, this has come from the anti-abortion movement. Right? So if you look at who's funding the initiatives, who is writing the proposals, it's, it's I don't think anyone would argue that it is coming out of an anti-abortion um, belief system and movement. Um, and, and, and so when you look at, there, there have been laws passed that are actually called fetal personhood laws, and those laws typically define the fetus as um, having rights and being indep having independent rights, having independent human existence um, from the moment of fertilization. Okay, so that's the context. Um, and, and, and as I said earlier, um, sometimes we're talking about laws, about criminal laws. Sometimes we are talking about child protection laws or statutes, and I'm not a lawyer, um, so it may not be criminal code, but it's somewhere in the, the regulations of the child welfare system, right? Um, and, uh, and sometimes it's just medical decision making, where there may not be any specific laws or rulings or medical guidelines, but doctors are taking the same concept, and typically it's doctors, are taking the same concept to say, hmm, I have two patients here. And what seems to happen once we get into this situation of having two patients is that the rights of the 
mother are deemed less important than the rights of the baby. Right. Um, so this is, that's just a little introduction to all of that. Um, so I'm not much of a lecturer. I believe in interactive learning. So I want you to think through and tell me, what do you think, what would be some of the consequences of this for pregnant and childbearing women? What are some of the things that could happen? Women don't report their substance use and then give birth to substance exposed newborns who then end up in the system. Yes, okay. Um, so that's not really so much a consequence for the women as for the, as for the babies, all right? Because, well. Well, they also have to deal with CPS afterwards. Yes, afterwards, right. Okay, so, so they, um, they don't, they simply avoid health care altogether. Um, this is one, one of the reasons why the American Medical Association, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the American Association of Pediatricians all oppose the criminalization of women's behavior in preg during pregnancy. Right. Um, uh, Mary, we can. There's an, there's another consequence, which is, uh, and we've seen cases of it mm -hmm. where a brain dead woman is kept alive because uh, yes. she is pregnant mm -hmm. in the near mm -hmm. term. Uh, Terry Schiavo. Mm -hmm. So her rights to mm -hmm. live or not mm -hmm. are, um, mm -hmm. are vanquished for the. Okay. And, and our legal system says that if a person is incapacitated, then um, there, there's sort of a designated. Mm, sequence of who should, should be able to decide for them. Um, in this case, it would automatically have been the husband. The husband, speaking for his wife, said she would not have wanted this. She would have wanted to be let to have a natural death. Um, instead, the doctors and her parents joined together on behalf of the fetus, appointed a lawyer for the, the, the state, appointed a lawyer for the fetus. This went on for, a very, for years before, before she eventually died. Um, other consequences for pregnant and childbearing women? How about if a woman has a home birth? The uh, National Health Service in England recently uh, put out a guideline stating that their, I think their new goal is something like at least 60% of all births should be at home because they're safer. In the US, a woman has a home birth, less than 1%. Can you picture anybody filing a lawsuit or a criminal charge or forcing medical intervention? Well, I mean, I think all of those are possibilities, right? Why? Why are they possibilities? Mm -hmm. Why do I think they're possibilities? Why are they possibilities? What in our system would lead to chooses home birth, gets arrested? Well, we or chooses harm birth? We seem to be more and more living in a very fractured society. Mm -hmm. And so there seems to be always someone <coughs> at some potentially extreme mm -hmm. viewpoint mm -hmm. wanting to exert their views. So what would be the argument that would give that person the legal authority? I don't know. I think <coughs> financial uh, and prospect of having a child at home is probably this is cheaper, yeah. But why would why would somebody who's going to come and arrest this person? Why? Yeah. Um, well, could you say something about uh, fatality of at home births? Would Ooh. Be much higher? Uh, so actually, it, it would be, be lower. It'd be lower. But but <coughs> most doctors assume it would be higher, and therefore there would be some sort of like indirect endangerment of the fetus. Yep. Mm -hmm. This has happened. Um, it's happened both before births and after births. It's happened that women have. Uh, simply in planning a home birth, they've had Child Protective Services called against them, or they've had doctors refuse to treat them and say, we're going to call the police, this is dangerous. Um, it has definitely happened um, after deaths or uh, stillbirths um, uh, in, in, home, in home birth situations. Um, in the case of, um, um, if, if there's any kind of health problem after a childbirth at home, right? If it happens in the hospital, we assume it was the standard of care. We assume everything was done right. right? In fact, I would argue if you look at the statistics, you're better off. For a planned home birth with a healthy uh, population and any ethical midwife would only 
take on a case in those circumstances, you're better off at home. There's, there's some pretty good data out there. And again, Netherlands, it's 40% of all births occur at home. England, they're working toward that goal. Um, okay. Can you think of any other circumstances? What happens if you don't plan a home birth, but you happen to miscarry? Can you see these rules, these regulations, these laws coming into effect? Yeah, there's a whole literature out there about nations that have really restrictive abortion laws. El Salvador. And miscarry and are then mm -hmm. locked up for like fetocide or mm -hmm. inducing an abortion mm -hmm. that was natural. Yeah. It, Unfortunately, it's not easy to tell the difference, like in terms of what happens within the vagina and uterus, between a stillbirth and a um, an abortion. Well, it's called a spontaneous abortion. Spontaneous, right? yes, like right, that's what it is. right, <laughs> right. Yes, I mean, if if an if an abortion is done safely and properly, um, it's not going to leave you know, the the evidence left behind is going to look pretty much the same as a stillbirth. Um, El Salvador is the is the um, major test case for this. So there are many women who have been incarcerated for what they say is a stillbirth, the state says was an abortion. Mm -hmm. right. um, so you don't have to have a law that says abortion is illegal, although in El Salvador they do have that law, um, to have women be charged with murder in the case of a stillbirth. Do you understand what I'm you following this? OK. Um, let me see. Quick question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a, is there a, with these laws, is there a specific age uh, for the fetus before they're willing to charge someone with? Again, fetal personhood um, laws that have been passed all say moment of fertilization. This is not even implantation. So first you have an egg, then you have a sperm, then they fertilize themselves, then they get implanted. All right. So this is going back to fertilization. Right. Um, in addition, someone has a, um, yeah, so, so they can be prosecuted for homicide. Um, there are also times when they, they've been prosecuted for depraved indifference or for child abuse. Right. Uh, let's see what else. Um, how about if you don't have a home birth? Yeah, we already talked about that. Normal hospital birth. But somehow, you give you give birth to a baby that has some sort of defects. Might there be consequences? Well, I think I don't know legally, but I know there's a lot of shaming um, now that if genetic testing is available, for example. Um, oh. One of the things that I'm Ooh. Uh, interested in is uh, cystic fibrosis. And you reverse if you desire the to carry the fetus to term. Right. It's the then reverse. There's shaming and how could you right. have a absolutely that happens and absolutely that's not about fetal rights. Because those are people what you're talking about are people who are saying, mm, this fetus isn't worth it, you should have gotten rid of it earlier. As opposed to the fetus well, has it's rights. Also fetal rights in the in that the fetus has a right not to be born. Um, so there is the mm. reverse, which is okay. how can you do this okay. to a fetus by right. Right. Them to live with this right. The These people wouldn't make that argument, not because it would be illogical, but right. because it's coming from a different, the, the reverse philosophical framework. Right. So yeah, I, I see. I see what you're. I see what, where you're coming from. But um, the same line of reasoning mm -hmm. applies to, like, what you're speaking about in mm -hmm. the hospital, where you mm -hmm. have a terminally ill fetus or neonate, mm -hmm. who, if the parent decides not to opt for. Yes. Elective medical treatment can be seen as yes. violating their rights. Yes, and this has happened. And this mm -hmm. has happened multiple times. Right, that um, I mean, the most famous case is the Baby Doe case, one of the most important bioethics cases in, in the century. Um, a, a parent had a child born with Downs, 
and as is often the case with kids with Downs, the, the baby had a lot of, of you know, heart defects and I don't remember what other, other defects, um, and it was clear that the baby could not survive without medical intervention. The, um, the doctors sued to force the parents to allow the interventions. Right? Same so what's the principle? What's going on there? Other than that the fetus has rights. What's the other principle going on there when doctors decide to intervene? What are they saying about parents? What are they saying about medicine? We know better than a parent what is best for this child. We know what a, how children should be treated. We know that the medical judgment is more important that, than any religious or philosophical or you know, cultural ideas that you might have about um, what is appropriate. Right? So it's kind of a, it's, it's a fairly massive power play. Um, sometimes on the part of the medical in establishment, other times on the part of the legal establishment, um, child, child custody people, you know, there's sort of, again, there's, there's, there's multiple actors in this. Um, let me see, the home birth. Um, then there was the pregnant woman who attempted suicide and the baby died. She survived. How is she now at risk? Now at risk, the woman. Hmm. How late was the pregnancy? It was late. Yeah, she was well into it. Yeah, it was it was close to full term. I think it was thirty three weeks. Well, I, I think that you're still subject to even like the survivor emotions of the statutes. It's a uh, like there's a point of viability oh. attached to which. But she didn't attempt. She didn't attempt an abortion. Right. That is, in effect, what happened. Yes. <coughs> so yes. Yeah, so she, so she's um, um, she's breaking the she, she's breaking the abortion laws that you can't have abortions after 24 weeks, um, you know, more or less 24 weeks. Um, and other than that, even if we don't use the abortion statutes, how else can we charge her? Negligent abortion. Um, you know, I think it is something like that. I, I think there is some. It's, it's reg I think it is something like negligent abortion. Uh, I don't remember what the, the term is exactly. It might be but recklessness in that case. Just yeah, um, child endangerment, mm. right? Um, and you can still, and, and the baby died. So you're looking at you know, major penalties. Right. Um, what happens if you, are you still at risk if you have that home birth or ignore medical advice and your baby's born healthy. Because the doctor would say that um, you didn't take their order. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that way you, you were also injuring the child in some way because mm -hmm. you chose yeah. to. And so what are the potential consequences? What's happening to the baby? You endangered that baby. It's child abuse. It's child neglect. It's child negligence. Whatever they, whatever whatever phrase they use, right? Um, and so, babies, healthy babies have been taken away. Okay. Healthy babies have been taken away from women who use drugs. Healthy babies have been taken away from women who didn't follow medical advice. Right. Um, long list here. Mother sued for damage to fetus in utero. I'm not sure who did the suing. My notes are too cryptic there. Sorry. Um, okay, so you've got a woman who's not following medical advice. And the doctors call either CPS or they call the police and they say, this woman is endangering her fetus. What happens to the woman? Incarcerated, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or if not incarcerated, she might be hospitalized yep. under watch. Mm -hmm. She might be put in a mental institution, right? 
she might be put in a drug treatment institution, she might be incarcerated. Um, what happens to the baby? Is prison good for babies? Okay, let's go over the ways in which prison is not good for babies. Or we'll start with, with uh, fetuses. In what ways are prisons not good for fetuses? Guess on this side. What's it like to be in a prison? Have you seen Orange is the New Black? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would imagine aggressive and violence to the woman. Yeah? Mm hmm. Stress. Stress is probably not good for fetuses. Yeah, being in prison tends to be stressful. Yeah, yeah, and stress is not good for anybody. It's especially not good for pregnant women who are, who are at risk for eclampsia, right? And, and it's one of the predictors of eclampsia, high blood pressure, um, not good for babies. What else do you know about prisons? Malnutrition? Yes, the food is terrible. It's not nutritious. Women tend to gain substantial weight in prison um, because they get very um, starchy, fatty diets of basically government surplus commodities, you know, a lot of cheese, a lot of white bread. Um, it's terrible nutrition. I, it's like the worst possible thing for a fetus, or a pregnant woman for that matter. Um, let me see the stress, we got food, violence. Uh, I was thinking of one other thing. Oh yeah, and how about the medical care in prison? Glad you came for part. Medical care in prison? What would you guess? Absolutely. Yeah, it's really, it's terrible. And it's, it's actually become worse um, in the last like 20 years, along 20, 30 years, along with many, many other government services. Um, prison health care has been farmed out to uh, corporate, pr okay. to private organizations. And I mean, they are routinely in the news for the incredibly poor quality of care that they provide. Um, and then the woman gives birth in prison. In most states, she is shackled. And then doesn't get any time afterwards with the infant. Yes, which is then taken to CPS. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and there's no colostrum. There's, there's not the benefits of early, early um, breastfeeding, right? Um, yeah, I mean, there have been multiple lawsuits about this, but I mean, I've been reading about this since like 1978, and I'm still reading about this, right? Uh, yeah. So it's interesting that there are fewer indictments. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, uh, also, I can't remember which case it is, but there's one of the like important cases in which you know, the woman gets sued for miscarrying, but she miscarries because her husband beats her, and he doesn't get sued. I can't remember which case it is. But. And also, you know, uh, drug use in the mm -hmm. home might mm -hmm. affect the fetus if, yes. if she's not the one using the drug. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. So how do you interpret that? Mm -hmm. How would you explain that? Why do all these laws lead to arrests and punishments against mothers but not fathers? I've never heard of one in which a father, I mean there must be some, but <coughs> don't hear about them. I feel like it's the same reason abortion, like men aren't involved in abortion. Mm -hmm. Because the father doesn't get to say like, no, he doesn't really have a sign on whether that child is aborted or not, like for mm -hmm. elective mm -hmm. abortion. So I feel like if we're keeping them out of that realm, why mm -hmm. put them in this realm? Um, but the difference is that the man may be the direct cause of the violence or the, um, he may be the one using the drug. He may be the one beating the woman. He may be the one who says, I don't want you out of this home, so you're going to have a home birth because I'm going to keep you locked up. Um, I'm not sure that those are fully parallel situations. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's on the continuum of gender inequity in the United mm -hmm. States mm -hmm. and globally mm -hmm. amongst women. So if we're saying, is there a statement about women, about motherhood, about worth in this fetal rights movement? 
what are we saying as a society about women? The potential for life within your womb is more mm -hmm. important than you currently living in your mm -hmm. womb. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the expert on your body is? Someone not. Someone else. Someone not you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is not you. Um, and what are we saying about fathers? And there, perhaps there is a parallel, right? So what are we saying about fathers? That they're out of the picture. They yeah. Don't yeah. That they don't have a role, they don't have a responsibility. Right. They're right. essentially a sperm bank. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And if they want to do more than that, that's, you know, cool. But if they don't, well, this isn't their, this isn't their responsibility. Right. Um, let me see. Okay. How did the how does this concept of fetal rights, and you know, regardless of whether you believe that the fetus is fully human or not, I, I think that this applies either way. Um, what are the consequences for non-pregnant women? Can you see ways in which non-pregnant women may be affected? by this concept of fetal rights? Well, there's this that time mm -hmm. early when, uh, in pregnancy, just trying to figure out when pregnancy starts. Right. There's mm -hmm. two weeks there that kind of count you as could be pregnant or could not be pregnant. So right. then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, people who aren't pregnant could potentially be pregnant. Oh, indeed. And then there's all these really cool co consequences if you took it to Indeed. We have the potentially pregnant population, which could include Lesbians, or lesbians who don't want children. Um, it could, could include, well, really, any woman with an ovary and uteruses, um, ovary, uterus, vagina. I guess, okay, you need a bunch of stuff. Any, 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 any woman who's got that stuff between the ages of like, you know, 13 and 40 ish, right? Um, how might this affect their lives? So now, you're, now you are the potentially pregnant. I think it, it has a sort of weird indirect uh, effect on their sort of decision making liberty, right? Like if you're mm -hmm. if you're a woman you're, and you're you're facing prosecution if you get a pregnancy you don't want, you're just going to avoid mm -hmm. behaviors that would potentially result in a pregnancy, which might not be the most okay. important liberty. Yeah. I mean, yes. Okay. So 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 the need to avoid pregnancy right, um, may get larger. Indirectly promoting yep. sexual mm -hmm. abstinence or something. Yep. Mm-hmm. That women of reproductive age abstain from drinking um, because of the risk of drinking during the period. And tobacco. Yep. And Minnesota. exercise. Oh no, no. That they that they exercise regularly, quit tobacco, quit alcohol, and begin taking um, folic acid. All women of reproductive age. There are huge government proclamations that invade on the womb, the barren womb mm -hmm. of all reproductive women and yeah. not just those who have mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. So, comments? Anything? Some of you have heard of this, some of you hadn't heard of this. Yeah. Reaction? I just want to know if it's a civil one, just so they can keep going. Okay, okay, all okay. right. Consequences. Might not be legal consequences. Might be social consequences. Could be legal consequences. Like to go out and get some young women here. Like to go out drinking. I think I have a glass of wine on a Friday night at a bar. Can you see any potential for consequence there? It's now in the newspapers. Women of reproductive age should not drink alcohol. And you're at a bar and you're having a cocktail. Or you're at a bar and you're ordering a cocktail. I know there are now waiters who will not, who refuse to serve alcohol to pregnant women, to visibly pregnant women. We know this happens. We know that there are restaurant owners who will kick women out right, if they're you know, adamant about having a drink. Um, you are now under, potentially under social pressure from anyone who sees you. Are you on birth control? Right. If you're not on birth control, why are you drinking? So when you started asking the question, mm -hmm. it was about the recommendations for all women of childbearing age. Right. But then you reframed it to visibly pregnant women. I'm saying that we know happens. Okay. I'm hypothesizing uh, that we will, 
that this, this establishes a framework mm -hmm. for people to start questioning the non-pregnant as well. You know? I think it might be high on the bar on your server, are you pregnant? Uh, or maybe it's, your, maybe it's your girlfriend. She listens to you, you know, I know you're not on birth control, and here you are drinking. It might be as subtle as that. Or it might be nine months later, oh, yep, you are pregnant, and oh, it's good, I'm happy to be pregnant, and I have a baby, and there's a problem with the baby, and you know what? What were you doing nine months ago before you knew you were pregnant? And it could be insurers. <laughs> like, I want to see your records from nine months ago. I'm going, I'm looking in your, I mean, this is, you know, these days with Google, I'm looking, you know, I'm, I'm the insurer and I'm getting, and I'm going to Google and I find your uh, receipts from nine months ago and nine months ago you were at a bar and you ordered three drinks and now this baby is born with a defect and well, so much for your insurance. Who knows? I mean, this is very hypothetical. Um, but at some level it's happening now. Right. Um, we're certainly seeing it happening with pregnant women. Right? I read of one case in which a woman's gym membership was canceled because the owner of the gym thought it was unsafe for a visibly pregnant woman to be exercising. He was very concerned about her baby and assumed that she was too dumb to know. Well, you know, as absurd as that sounds, right. cases mm -hmm. like that, couldn't the liability be imputed to the business owner or something? I don't know. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm not that saying anything as to people's right. motivation, but... Right, right. And that may, be, that may be why they're concerned. It's still not okay, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> So what I think is also important to, to know is that if you go, is that the same list of organizations, American Medical Association, uh, gynecologists, pediatricians, um, have over the years put out a series of announcements uh, after the eventual realization that actually um, crack babies don't exist. Crack babies are babies of poor women and their outcomes are the same as other babies of poor women. Same for meth babies, same for coke babies, um, and many would argue same for alcohol babies. Um, there's some reason why the entire, virtually the entire populations of France and Italy drink daily and don't have problems with fetal alcohol syndrome. Uh, it's something that happens in a limited population of extreme drinkers, probably also with some genetic component. Um, but this is now you know, medical, uh, medical guidelines. I mean, they're like, like basically sort of public, service, public announcements from these different organizations. Like the drug, of, the drug of the decade, at the end of the decade, each decade, these announcements came out saying, oops, no, it's okay. It was safe. Right. Um, and that's definitely the case with alcohol, which I mean, we know we've been drinking for millennia. Um, so it might be easier to believe that these, that these um, policies are, are helpful if they kind of made sense biologically, but to a large extent they don't. Um, what the medical associates do say is that, you know, it's not optimal <laughs> to be taking illegal drugs during pregnancy or many legal drugs during pregnancy, but that um, withdrawal during pregnancy is very dangerous for the fetus. Treating a, fe treating a baby after birth is far safer. So, you know, it, it's not obvious, you wouldn't guess it, but that's, that's what they're now saying, right? Um, okay, all right, so I'm going to add one more piece of data for you, which is that, as you might expect, um, overwhelmingly, almost 100% of all of these cases have been poor women of color. So we can ponder that as well in terms of why certain people, why certain mothers essentially are being targeted and also think about the consequences for the women and the babies. So now I ask you, what are the ethical issues? I'm assuming somebody here is an ethicist or ethics student. Are these just medical issues or are these ethical issues? And if so, what are the issues? Okay. Most things I feel are not good choices. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. combination. Of sure. Sure. So, what's the ethical end on this? 
Okay, I didn't look up all my ethical principles because I assume somebody here would just <laughs> spout them Did right you away. Say what, what's what are the ethical issues? So we're, we're respecting all of this. All of this? Yeah. Okay, all right, well, I'm a graduate student of philosophy. I'm there you go. Go for it. <laughs> well, first, I mean, we could sort of jump past personhood that we didn't even talk about the mm -hmm. extent to which a fetus, which you would say, has rights. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, normally when, when we talk about granting rights to objects, mm -hmm. people, we, you know, something. Uh, is granted a right to the extent that uh, it can act on that right, that it mm. has capacities. Mm -hmm. So you don't give voting rights mm. to pigs because they don't have okay. the capacity to, you know, okay. rational thought and things like that. So, so yeah, I, so I, I, let's just put on the table that if you do not believe the fetus is fully human, then the concept of fetal personhood just isn't going to make much sense to you. Right. Um, I'm not sure if that's an ethical principle so much as a philosophical principle. Like, we just, through the course of our lifetime, we develop a, a belief in what the status of the, of the fetus is. Well, it is an ethical principle mm -hmm. when you okay. take into consideration autonomy and the ability to act okay. in the interest of your own person. Okay. And so explain that a little more. Philosophical and ethical. Okay. Uh, All right. I mean, it's okay. certainly not uncontroversial that fetuses have rights. Absolutely. So. Right. Mm -hmm. So what other moral principles? So f the first moral principle involved is um, what is what constitutes personhood, <laughs> and what is of value is, and you're, you're saying the capacity to act is somehow what defines pigs act. Well, that would, no, that would be the extent to which, so the capacity, the extent to which we, we grant rights to things, or okay. in what regards uh, right. we grant rights, it, they have to mm -hmm. agree with the capacity of the agent that is mm -hmm. receiving the right. So okay. we don't like, the reason I mentioned pigs, we don't mm -hmm. give pigs voting rights because they can't even, they don't even know, they can't even act on that, they don't know what that means. Okay. So okay. with respect to a fetus, uh -huh. okay. you might argue, well, fetuses don't believe that they're agents and that they're experiencing okay. the world and they don't believe, they can't project themselves into the future. Okay. This is an argument by a guy named Michael Tooley, okay. who's an ethicist, a professor of philosophy at the University okay. of Colorado. Okay. He actually argues that fetuses, because they don't know that they're, they're conscious beings mm -hmm. and they can't mm -hmm. project themselves into the future, okay. that they don't have a right to life at all. Because okay. we are the ones that have raised lives, mm -hmm. because we know what we are, we're conscious beings, we know that, we have okay. interests, we can project ourselves into the future. So okay. there's this sort of question about. Okay, that makes sense. So I'd be happy if one person wants to make the uh, opposing argument that fetuses are fully human, and then I want to move off of that question altogether. Anyone want to make that? I mean, he is a term human. What's the alternative in this scenario? Um, so if a fetus is not fully human, a human fetus, what, what else? Cells. It's human cells. But it's the same as a human being. When I say human, I mean human being as opposed to, you know, human skin. So how is a fetus different from a one day old newborn in that scenario? So, um... With respect I'm just, to being right. understanding the future, being able to act. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm not going to. I'm not going to argue with you. I just want make your statement. Mm -hmm. So, so rather than rhetorical statements, just make a statement. Okay. Fetus is fully human, deserving of all rights because because um, any assignment of personhood or humanity mm -hmm. is by nature has been more of a subjective mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, it's not really clear where along the uh, developmental trajectory from mm -hmm. fertilization to age. Mind, but <laughs> and at the end again, where, mm -hmm. where uh, do we assign personhood and the rights that come with it? Okay, great. So clearly there's, a, there's an ethical divide on the nature of the fetus, and that's going to very much affect how people respond to this concept of fetal rights. I could conceive of people believing in fetal personhood, but still opposing this concept of fetal rights because of the consequences for families, mothers, babies. All right, so I think that is to some extent separable. Um, other ethical issues that you see in this? Well, the last one you brought up was social justice. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we're targeting um, oh, okay. women of color mm -hmm. for our indictments of mm -hmm. behavior and um, mm. Removing the child from mm -hmm. the child. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I think we have okay. 
lot of disparities in how we view people, uh, women's rights and women of color, mm -hmm. women of color rights. Women of color, yeah. 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 Having trouble getting the apostrophe. Yeah, yeah, that's a hard one. Okay. okay. Yeah, and what does it tell us about our views about women of color? Our society's views of women of color? Well, it hasn't been that long ago that, uh, frankly, we just sterilized women that we didn't want to have um, babies, and mm -hmm. um, they were mostly women of uh, poor economic status mm -hmm. and or women of color or American Or usually Indian. both. Or American Indian. Mm -hmm. yeah, anyone who uh, didn't fit the mm -hmm. WASP identity. Mm -hmm. Other ethical issues. How about from the perspective of medical ethics? Do we have any medical ethics people here? Doctors have a responsibility to act in the best possible, like to be benevolent the way they're acting toward their beneficent, that's what it is, mm -hmm. towards their patients. It's the only one I can remember. So if you have two patients that are mm -hmm. in one, you have a responsibility to both of those. Mm -hmm. And piecing apart those two identities is really hard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're acting to protect one over the So you're saying it should be the reverse? Or what you're or so it's just like, if you're acting in the best interests of the fetus to the detriment of the mother and uh -huh. her own decision making potential, uh -huh. you are still acting ethically towards that entity. Uh -huh. It's also, it's, it reminds me of the, the St. Joe's case where we had um, a therapeutic abortion here in the Valley and they lost their Catholic uh, uh, identity status because of that mm -hmm. status. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of that conflict. Can I add to that? Mm -hmm. Sort of circling back to <coughs> um, we were talking about ethics. And that one way, not the only way, but one way of looking at ethical dilemmas is it's often right versus right. It's, it's mm -hmm. right to try to protect mm -hmm. uh, all women, including those of vulnerable populations in particular. Mm -hmm. There's also a right to try to protect uh, the fetuses And if a poor black woman or even a middle class white woman goes before a judge to argue against a doctor about medical treatment, um, she simply does not have the authority to be granted the autonomy, which I'm now remembering is one of those other basic principles, right? There's a right to autonomy. Um, a lot of the early cases that came up that kind of first got feminist health um, attention had to do with cesarean deliveries. So women who, uh, women who were told by their doctors that they had to have cesarean deliveries for the sake of the baby. The first 11 cases that were documented, nine of the women gave birth while the case was still in progress and they gave birth vaginally and the babies were fine. So clearly medical judgment is not Perfect, um, but in these cases, cesarean section is is, is, is described simply as a, a routine procedure. Indeed, it has become routine in the United States, where we have rates of cesarean sections that are now about thirty-four percent, compared to the World Health Organization's recommendation of ten to twelve percent of a population. Um, but it, it has become routine. It's seen as just well, you know, the way. It's just the way babies are born these days, right? Um, but in fact, there, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of evidence suggesting that cesarean sections um, do pose some risks for the babies, and they certainly 
pose risks from others. I mean, there are, there are lifetime consequences. There can be lifetime consequences of, of cesarean delivery. I mean, as well as just the impact of having a newborn after having had a cesarean delivery. I wouldn't say that, you know, like sitting down for the first two weeks was too, was like painfully un, uh, almost impossible, right? Try rocking a baby and, and, and you can't sit down ever while you're rocking that baby. Um, they're real, con anyway. Um, are there es ethical things that you can think of here? Yeah. So kind of going along with what you said before, mm -hmm. how these dilemmas often come down to a right versus right situation. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I think that's you know, spot on. Um, but what, what, what you have to look at, I think, is the nature of each sort of side of the argument. And I, this, is, I, this is like sort of like the legal end of it, uh, as I see it anyways. Uh, but when, when anytime you impose a criminal penalty for a certain conduct, you're sort of imposing a limitation on a person's liberty or autonomy or whatever you want mm -hmm. to do. So it's really important, like a rule or a law is only going to be just if the liberty, uh, you know, constrained is you know appropriately tailored to whatever mm -hmm. interest the state's trying to advance. So like right. uh, you know speed limits are okay because promoting public safety is more important than your liberty to drive as fast right. as you want. Right. Well, in the case of criminal um, penalties for certain things that pregnant mothers are doing with their own fetus, it's you're, you're comparing the, the right of the woman to conduct her life and her health and her reproductive autonomy and her family as she sees fit with well, what exactly state right would there be? state interest would there be just sort of like healthy population I mean sure but that's why we have child abuse laws also involves having fetuses born who are wanted yes and I, I think that's just as important to a healthy population as mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'd argue more important to a healthy population so we can certainly see the need for better data <laughs> we could so that if doctors are going to say for example you need a cesarean section they better actually have the data supporting that um, we can certainly see the impact of disproportionate or unequal power that, uh, you know, if a woman is brought in on a, on a legal charge, um, and we know at this point that so many, many, many people are now simply, essentially forced to plead guilty because the penalties for going to trial and the potential legal penalties are so much greater, right? So in, in fact, I was, you know, there's been a whole string of cases where, the f one, and including the one that I started with, it just, it just didn't go to trial. Right? No, no, it's not that one, it's another one. Anyway, anyway for the, many of these cases, most of these cases have not gone to trial because the cost of the lawyer and the potential to be sued or to be charged with, with homicide or, or negligent, or something, something very severe, um, they, just, they just plead anyway. Um, I guess the other thing that I, that I would know is just thinking of your earlier comment is absolutely one reason doctors are doing this is because they're afraid of malpractice charges. Right? So you have a lot of, lot of things going on there contributing to the situation. Um, any other thoughts on the ethical issues? You were worried about the dilemma between fetal rights and women's rights. I, I don't think I would say I was worried about it, but that's a fair question. Uh, sure. So. Okay, I just wanted to comment on that. Sure. Okay, so yeah, so supposing that this is genuinely diplomatic, that there, that there is a conflict between a fetal mm -hmm. rights mm -hmm. and the rights of the woman. Right. So in the first place, I mean, I, well, we won't have to get into that, but we don't. Mm -hmm. We can say that maybe there's not even a genuine dilemma here because what does it mean to say that a fetus even has any rights? Mm -hmm. um, so or some of us would argue that. So sure. So, but supposing maybe so. Let's suppose first and foremost, supposing that a fetus does. Mm -hmm. uh, what, it, what for these interests to conflict? I mean, it's just it seems to me it seems at least intuitively it seems obvious to me that the that the, 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 the woman has you know greater you know significance her interests have more significance why that they have more moral weight um and this is and this is because just considering the nature of the being we're talking about okay yeah I want you to go away from that so well because that's it, that's such I a mean, divide whatever, and that's what's significant. Mm -hmm. Okay, how is it in the babies in, how is it in, ooh, look at my language shift. How is it in the fetus slash baby's interest to have the mother's wishes take precedent? Take precedence. So how is that in the fetus's interest? So yes, we'll let's assume that we care about the fetus. Okay, right, sure. Why might we say better to let the woman do what the woman's gonna do? Better to let the woman make her own decisions rather than having the doctor or the lawyer or the police make those decisions. 
Well, pretty obviously, mm -hmm. I think most would say we, we want um, uh, a, a good outcome. Mm -hmm. society's interest mm -hmm. to see healthy outcomes and healthy yeah. outcomes including you know a lack of these negative mm -hmm. uh, situations where the, the, the mother is imprisoned and separated and shackled and all these things that mm -hmm. you've talked about. Oh and I didn't mention what it would be like to give birth lying flat on a bed with your arms and legs shackled. Think through that from the baby's perspective. It kind of goes together, which sure. is basically the point, that you can't affect one without affecting the other. Yeah. I, the worst possible position for giving birth is lying flat on one's back. Um, they do not do this in Europe, or they don't do it often in Europe. Um, just think about gravity, right? And it, it's, it's very similar to having a woman who's drugged up during the course of, of childbearing, right? Um, any natural, I mean, you know, I'm trying to lift a five pound weight, right? And what I want to do is I want to use my shoulders, and not just, not just my shoulders and, and my arms, but you know, my legs and, and my neck and my back. I'm like, oh, my body's getting into it. I'm shackled. I'm not doing any of that. I'm in, I'm in pain. And I may have been shackled for how many hours on end? Right? This, this doesn't do anything good for any body, right? uh, any like literal body. Um, so yeah, it is very hard to separate the interests of the, the mother and the fetus, and mother and the baby. Um, and I guess we're, we're sort of running out of time, but I, I'm just going to you know, leave you to ponder the ways in which a society could be organized so that we don't turn to the, so that, so that we have other options other than the criminal and CPS, things are awful, let's break up the family. Right? What else, what are the supportive services, for example? What, what, what are the supports that childbearing women need that would allow them to deal with drug addiction? Right? Find alternatives to drug addiction. Um, find, uh, find men who don't beat them or put them at risk in other ways. Um, find the economic um, support that they need so that they're not, th their, their fetuses and children are not endangered by malnutrition, by um, poor housing. And, you know, kids get taken away, babies get taken away, pregnant women get taken away to have their babies get taken away because their housing is so poor. Right? Um, that's considered dangerous. Right? So all of these these are other ways that we might think about to, to address at least some of the underlying issues. I think I'll end there. Thank you very much. Ms. Thank you all for coming.